as many thousands of miles away on the BBC. And perhaps, like in most areas of the performing arts, the unsung heroes, we have somebody with us this evening who is responsible for designing the Cybermen. Now, I think we have a slide of the Cybermen. That is a Cyberman. Can you see that? It's a bit hard to see. You might like to come down one at a time and have a look at that. But the designer of the Cybermen, all the way from London, England, Sandra Tynan. Here she is. Do you mind going down and running up the ramp again? I thought that was really good. Just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you a very well-known Melbourne figure. <laughs> I'll just keep him. Come on, just get rev yourself up there. <laughs> Here he comes, Mr. Rod Quantock. Hi, <laughs> um... Uh, Sandra's very brave for a number of reasons this evening, uh, not the least of which she has consented to be interviewed by me. Um, I am possibly the world's worst interviewer, but uh, Sandra, uh, we only got one microphone to do our interview. We should have another microphone. What? Just hang on, Sandra. It's a bit difficult with only one microphone. There we go. You take that one. It doesn't reach very far, so you might have to. There we Maybe go. I there we go. Stand up the uh, Sandra, I have to begin by asking, what is it like to be the person who's known as the designer of the Cyberman? Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> really terrifying. And, and the one that's up there on the back wall yes. isn't in fact one that I designed. Oh. But that's what happened when I stopped designing and other people took over. Oh, they made it look good. They made it look much oh, better. I see. Oh, thanks, Sandra. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> oh, look, I do apply. I had no one. Oh, how embarrassing. Uh, Sandra, your Cyberman was slightly less elaborate. Well, yes, I, I was responsible for the first two. Mark one and Mark two. And... Um, this is my plug for the book now. The picture that you see on the back wall... Hang on, Doctor Who fan club people, you'll, you'll notice them now. They're all the people craning like this. <laughs> a new Doctor Who book's coming out. Wow. There and guess what? You can't buy it in the bookshops. Isn't that sad? You can only buy it by sending off your money in an envelope with a form to the UK. And guess what? I've got some forms with me tonight. So if anyone... <laughs> Gee, that was lucky, wow. wasn't it, Sandra? That was really I just have lucky. to have some with me. That's good. I'm sorry we're not on national television and that might have been worthwhile, but it's called Doctor Who Cybermen. Now, the other thing I must ask you, which, who was the Doctor Who when you were working there? Well, I worked with two Doctor Whos. The first one was Doctor Who number one, William Hartnell. Who is no longer with us. Who is no longer with, with us. us. Thank you, Doctor Who fan club. And the second one, Patrick Charton, who is also no longer oh, with, with us. us. The curse of Doctor Who, they call my it, don't word, they? My word. Because Tom Baker, while he's still alive, may as well be dead because nobody will employ him anymore. Which is a bit sad, really, isn't That's it? That's another story. Who I'm wants Doctor Who now, playing right? Hamlet? Oh, look, Doctor Who's playing. So, uh, do, you, do you have, was it fun and fond memories? Oh, look, absolutely terrific. And if you want to read all about it, all the things you wanted to ask about the Cybermen that were afraid <laughs> to ask right. are all in here. And it's a terrific book. And I can't open it up and show you the pictures from here, but if anybody wants to have a quick sneak preview later, meet me behind the... What's it? The, and I'll oh, even give you a There's a couple of ex-roadies over there laughing at that. <laughs> so, that, all right. Well, look, the book's available for a peruse. The order forms are there. Sandra Tynan, our very special international guest, who's flown in all the way from where? From um, Garden Vale, actually. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. <laughs> there we go. Oh, well, look, thank you very much, Sandra. And will you be involved in the production of later in the evening? Do you want to be a doctor's companion or something for oh, the night? Oh, why not? In for a penny and for a pound. Exactly. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, listen, thanks, Sandra. Sandra Tyne and everybody, the designer of not that particular Cyberman, but a Cyberman somewhere along the line. And next, next we have a. Something in the trees, I think. Oh, there he is. Possum. Very huge possum. A mutant possum. Who's been brought in especially for this evening's performance. Now, we also have uh, this evening three people who've actually performed alongside a Doctor Who in Doctor Who episodes. 
And we'll begin by introducing uh, a gentleman who, well, a gentleman, I don't know, I only met him earlier on, he seems all right. I mean, I've got nothing to complain about yet. He seemed okay. Uh, he played Turlow, uh, a, a sort of schoolboy version of a, 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 a female companion, except he was male. <laughs> Is that a fair description, Doctor Who fan club? No! No! Yeah. Let, let's find out really what he was. Oh, hang on, look at the microphone. I had a microphone in my pocket. Uh, is there somebody from the Doctor Who fan club who can quickly tell me about Turlo? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Pete? Yeah. Over there. Okay, excuse me for a moment. We're just going to go and do an interview with a member of the... Hello, yeah. how are you? It's very nice to meet you. What's your name? David. Now that Johnny Young's not working anymore, there's a bit of an opportunity for me here. Um... Hi, Rick. Have you got a joke for us, Rick? Look, I'll be... Oh, Roy, how are you, Roy? See what... Oh, you want to speak to you, Roy? Hello? <laughs> Bloody kids. Sorry. Where's the... That... Johnny Young used to say that, but only when the cameras weren't rolling. Who's from the fan club? Oh, thank you. How do you do? Now, Turlow was... Turlow was an alien who was exiled to Earth and recruited by the Black Guardian to kill Doctor Who. You weren't holding that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and? But he turned out to be a good companion in the end. Of course. He turned, didn't he? He became a... And what was his name as the actor? Mark Strickson. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Strickson and his wife, Julie, who used to play Fire Escape. Do you know her? Yes. Yes, see, of course they do. Mark and Julie. Sorry, Mark and Julie. I was just finding out all about you. There. There's Turlo. <laughs> I'm a little person. Like to one well, we'll interview one another, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can tell I'm new to Australia because I've got all these hats on. Um, you might everybody not recognize think, it, Everybody but... thinks, who's that silly pom wearing in a Cobra? You see, I've got red hair, really, underneath this, but, um, you know, they are. If you've, if you've had a BBC haircut, you need to cover it over, I'll tell you. Did, um, did a lot of you watch the last series? Yeah! yeah. Now, um, would you die for us? <laughs> and so this is the sort of thing you have to do. I have to take my cube off of this, right? Mark dies as an actor a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you do this, right? You go something like... Yeah, That's really why he's brought his Akubra. This is it. <laughs> uh, you've 
Is there anything else they need to know for their performance? Did Turlo have anything in particular he used to say? Did Turlo have anything in particular he used to say? I don't think he did. He used to get sort of um, he was intelligent, captured in episode one and bound and ganked and tortured for episodes two and three. And whatever. If that turns you on, it was a great part to play. <laughs> Then he got sort of let out in episode four. I had a wonderful time. It was great. Um, no, that's it. Okay, all right. <laughs> we just got to die well. Look in pain if you play Turner. All well, right. Mark, this evening in our extravagant video production of episode one of the West Coast Daleks versus Doctor Who, will be playing Turner. Turner, I think. Yes, it's in the And video. Julie will be playing. Fire escape. <laughs> Fire escape. Ice hot. What sort of silly show? Ice was hot. It? Ice hot. Build high for happiness. Thank you very much. Oh, I need that because we've got to talk to one other. One other. We have an original Doctor's Companion. Right now, if it had been an American program, she would have been a beautiful assistant. But because it was English and it was the BBC and we were young and innocent, and it was black and white when she began. She was a doctor's companion. She played Joe, one of the very first doctor's companions. She had three doctors that she worked with. I believe that she worked for three years in total and is trying to forget that she ever did it. But thanks to the Doctor Who fan club, who bear a marked similarity to the Israeli Secret Service in finding these sort of people, we have Joe from Doctor Who. Katie Manningham, here Joe from Doctor, here we go, Joe from Doctor, here. Can you see her girls and boys? Where is she, girls and boys? Now you're supposed to say she's over there. Where is she, girls and boys? Oh. Hi, Uncle Katie, did you have a microphone? You have one of ours. Here we go. Hello. And you do? That's better. That's good. Now you played against which doctors? Because the Doctor Not Who fan club. Doctors. Who I doctors? Play with which doctors? Oh, okay. All right. The who doctors? Who doctors did you work with? Who doctors did you work with? <laughs> yes. I worked with John Pertwee. He's not dead. My person of John Pertwee. <laughs> because he's so much taller than me, you see. Would you like to demonstrate what it was like? Because I'm tall. He was in permanent, he was in permanent plie with me because right. I'm actually only this height. Oh, you are too? Oh, I'm sorry. Nobody over under five foot's allowed to work for feet. We better put them back on. Yes, OK. I must be the only person who's ever climbed mountains in eight-inch platform shoes. Right. Now, so when we used to be doing a two-shot together, first of all, John would start out very good, you see. He would do his plie. So we look good like that, you see. Hi, so, Joe. What will we do now, Joe? I don't know. Shall we go and get us a Dalek gal? Oh, let's do it. Poochman, let's go then. <laughs> that would have been in America. Anyway, go on. Uh, OK, so there we are. So John would be doing... What are his knees like? Because he, he must have bent. great knees. Very bent. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> so he'd be very good like that. And the other thing that John Pertwee used to do is he used to put his hands on his hips when he was making a statement. So there am I, in my two shot, and I have one line. I bet you couldn't guess what it was. But Doctor. The Doctor. That's it. What, did, what did the companion so, say? But doctor. doctor. I had three lines. But Doctor, look out Doctor, and oh Doctor, there's a big one. <laughs> okay, so there we are, all ready, and he's being very serious, and he's telling the, the aliens what's, what's happening, what's going down, etc, etc. And then he finishes, he forgets to plie, puts his arm on his hip, and I've waited four hours for this line. And I'm right here, and I'm going, and he... So finally, it's... But Doctor! <laughs> This is no, Katie. I think we'll do that again. Oh, they didn't. They didn't. Have you got the outtake? <laughs> yes, all my right, outtakes. Now, what out then? What, we just have to go through because there'll be a lot me, of. Excuse oh, me. Yes, certainly. Carry on. Uh, is that the size Madam would like? We have uh, a number of Italian models. Oh, have you really? How nice. Yes, well, just down there. Um, just what, did, what did the beautiful companion have to say? Buck Doctor. Buck Doctor. Yes. Look out, Doctor. Right. And all Doctor, there's a big one. All right, so let's rehearse those one at a time. Are you ready? On the count of three, Buck Doctor. Ready? One, two, three. 
Right, next one, one, two, three. Look out, Doctor! And finally, oh, Doctor, there, is it oh, Doctor? Well, try ooh, it's bad. Ooh, ooh, Doctor. Ooh. Carry on, Doctor Who, it's turning into, isn't it? <laughs> ooh, Doctor, there's a big one. I can't do this. Ooh, Doctor, there's a big one on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Don't worry, it's only a marsupial. Okay, sorry. Now, the screen. The screen. Ready? The screen. This is very important. Are you all ready for this? No. Right, have you got that? So on the count of three. It's very good, isn't it? Has anyone got a strap, so? Katie. Katie is considered the definitive Doctor Who companion screamer. And many of them still today ring you up when they get the job, oh, don't listen, they? listen, I mean, you know, I scream for people over the phone. Oh, I mean, you know. Fantastic. So let's try that scream on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Remember that Robert Fordham's working late emptying out his office just up the road there tonight. This is how he feels. So ready? One, two, three. Now I know how George Michael feels. Isn't that fantastic? What else do I have to do? So is there anything else I should know? I don't think so. All right. I don't think so. I think that's it from me. All right. Do you I'm want to depart. Is there anything? Who was the best doctor you worked with? At the panel? Well, I've, I've, I've... I very much like working with William Hartnell and Pat Trout, but John Pertwee was the best for me. <laughs> we hope to say well, that. Well, there must be some John Pertwee people Are there? John? there. I like John Pertwee. Well, we couldn't get John Pertwee tonight, so in fact we have Peter Dacos. <laughs> Actually, yeah, actually, actually, I quite like, like the thought of Peter a... Dacos. Okay. <laughs> All right. So before we begin our Doctor Who. Um, uh, production this evening, we have to have the judging of the costumes. So could those people who have costumes please assemble over to that side of the stage. I'll ask Mark and Julie and Sandra to come back on stage because they will judge the best costumes and they will be presented by Peter Dacos at the end of the show this evening. So people in costumes, please assemble here for the March Past. Can we have some lighting here, please? Some lighting? We'll have to get rid of the spotlights because we're having the March Past and we need to be able to see people. All right, do you, can you, do you need a pen and paper? You will. Okay, pen and paper. All right. All those people who can, in costume, thank you very much. Now, it's difficult to judge them because they don't have names or numbers. Right, so you're quickly going to have to write a brief description of each costume, Sandra. Okay, so here they are assembling now. Oh my God! Exterminate! 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 Okay, where's that alien that I saw before? What happened to the alien? Oh, there! Come on, alien! Up you come! Look, you can win best costume, which is a $200 gift voucher from Brashes. You're fantastic! Oh, stand up and show them. Come on, look. I mean, really, that's not Tide bad. Bunch. So you'll come and join the aliens. Thank you very much. Get the yeah. tight bunch. You she might. keeps telling me she's not in costume, but we know better. Okay, are there any other people in costume? We, um, we've got a few Daleks. Oh, there's a wonderful Dalek here. And we've got an alien here. And we've, there you are, now look, that's imagination, an instant alien, have a look at that. <laughs> Inebriated Earthling, Inebriated he's, uh, Earthling. He's representing John Elliott's interests here this evening. Anyway, he's just meeting... Get off, get off, exterminate, get rid exterminate, of move exterminate, move destroy, destroy. Move destroy. Move Take this man down. Can I hold that for a moment? I'm working and I'll need that. Okay, thanks very much. There we go. Hi, hi, hi. Hello to everyone on Gallifrey. It's going um, to be a bad night for you lot. Okay. All right, we'll begin now as Combo Nicky play the March of Terror as only Combo Nicky can. Ladies and error, gentlemen, error. in front Dr. of our Dr. celebrity Dr. judges, the grand march past of costumed members of the Melbourne community under category.
three, one, two, three, steadily marching past. Thank this you, way, move, move, this way, costume parade, this way, move, move, move. What's wrong with the band? to the head Dalek up the front, please. If you could arrive up there to the head Dalek. That's the way. Oh, look at this. Hey. It's a week in a bath full of palm olive, that one, isn't it? What a wonderful costume. Thank you very much. You've gone to a lot of trouble, young man. Would you like to explain to me, you know, this is, uh, this is a, uh, what your name is? Daniel. This is Daniel, everybody. And you can see Daniel's gone to an extraordinary amount of trouble this evening to be part of this inaugural uh, video production. Uh, the inaugural? Evening all. Well done. You can say hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, great, you got the job. Police box. Okay, where's the police box? Off you go. This is the man who owned the TARDIS. That's the way. Oh. <laughs> Okay, there we go with the Daleks. Alright, are you reasonably confident you have the winners? We need six winners. We have awards for the best mutant, the most improved alien, best and fairest alien, best Dalek, best doctor's companion and best costume. So we have seven prizes this evening. As we're at, though, we'll start getting their instructions from the production crew so that they know what to do. We're on standby. If our stars could now take their places, please. Rod, Rod, it's a bit quick for us. All right. I'll, I'll um, we, in fact, we, in fact, we didn't even know what the categories were. Um, so if you could give us the categories again and we could then have them all back, it would be very, very good. <laughs>